Greetings family, much love, what's up? Jesse Tree here. Just wanted to bring you another video. Uh, working on finishing up this installation we've been doing in Cedar Crest for my friend David. And just want to give you a little walkthrough here. So this site was completely untouched and we built all of this. So started starting with these beds and peach trees. Uh, we kind of created the bed and made those swales, gave it some wood mulch and some feed, and we're going to develop this area out here with some more rainwater harvesting basins and the yield planting over time. Um, and then we put in this trail with wood chips. And we're starting the process of slowing down the water all over the site. We have a little swale here. We're going to plant nitrogen fixing overstory tree of black locust and then moving up here into the swales we created some time ago we're starting to all of the cover crop we sowed in terms of wheat buckwheat and vetch is starting to come um, we included the gamble oak uh, as part of this guild because we have these acorns that come off of it that um you know, our super high nutrient source, um, indigenous people in the area and more over in like places like California utilize the acorn for as much as 85% of the diet. So here we have an overstory of the native uh, guild of pinon, juniper, and oak. So we've worked that into our swale system here. You can see swales we've created down low. We're building soil with vetch. And buckwheat planting out trees fruit trees and corn and such and that's basically uh, gonna be the seed corn for next year um, developed all these systems of trails or David did David and his family based on where they like to visit in their yard and this has just been a hard hill full of clay and rock that we have now transformed to capture storm drainage, uh, runoff, infiltrate it. It's inoculated with wood chips, mycorrhizal fungi. We laid down straw, biochar, uh, and um, all this cover crop of, of vetch and, and um, buckwheat and the wheat that came up on the straw. So it's fun to see how things are greening up um here it's such a blessing to be able to connect with the land and uh, create a positive benefit and positive impact david and i were talking today about propensity for humans or for people especially uh sort of uh environmental or you know politically aligned leftist type mentality you think you know, the human beings essentially are bad for the earth. Um, I don't ascribe to any political party. I feel like this bifurcation of our parties has led to a divide and conquer sort of state where, you know, the bankers and the powers that be uh, get us fighting instead of working together uh, to solutions build. So I think it's about stepping across the aisle. This came into conversation today, this whole political thing, because it's such a important thing at this time it's like a big family thing and um the human family and you know conservatives would rationally be conservative of land um and conservative of, of land practice seeking to understand that natural resource uh is a form of abundance that is a form of natural security national security so that's what we're trying to em uh, live here is that we can grow our own food and be our own source of abundance and step outside of these political affiliations and start to work on a sense of unity. Total digression, but whatever. Anyway, the political sphere is something I don't like all that much, but it affects us all. And so this is something that I feel like gardening and permaculture can be a great healing in us understanding more how to work together work with the land and realize that it is a matter of national security 
if there's not, I mean, look at the fires, the floods, the, um, uh, you know, issues at hand with economics. Um, we don't realize our natural resources are uh, what give us our sense of sovereignty and what this country is built off of, you know, is also an abundance of resource from a huge amount of land, also building the country on the backs of slaves, land that we took from native people. So how can we heal these wounds? How do we like uh, bridge these gaps between men and women, between uh, a African Americans, Indians, Caucasians, um, uh, leftists, rightists, what have you. Let's now is the time for unification through diversity. That's the lessons of the garden that I was trying to get to here. So, on that note, more gardening. So, we got our guild here starting. Um, we have apple, uh, pear, and I think up there is a, a peach. Um, and then down here, there's a locust. Uh, and this is a, what do we got? I forget here. Um, yellow transplant, yellow transplant. Oh, it's an apple. Um, so yeah, we'll have this overstory tree nitrogen fixer with the understory of fruit trees. Under that, we have things like this is buffalo berry, there's currant down there, um, there's sumac, there's uh, service berry, and those would be like the understory guild, and then we'll plant in with it the blue corn, you know, beans, squash, nitrogen fixers, and um, this is going to be part of their foodscape. Now the main foodscape will be around the house, zone zero, in permaculture, typical permaculture fashion. Um, and we're working on that because they're having issues with like um, the downspouts and the roof and you know uh, making the most of capturing the water is gonna mean addressing those issues first so we're working on that and we're working on like a multi-phase multi-year plan so sort of walk you through that eh, the other side is a whole nother thing um, essentially we're gonna be I'll just take it. Okay. All right. So we're going to create a capture pond here. You can see the erosion, despite uh, our best attempts to make a little path here. We're finding a better spot is going to be over there. We're going to shore this up with swales and create a nice infiltration basin here where we're going to plant hardy pecan. And then stepping through to this side, um, this is the parking lot for their tenant, their tenant, um, that's the cabin that they rent out, um, so if you need a place to live, contact me on this page, and you're, if you're in the Mexico area, Albuquerque area, and I can connect you with David and see if there's something amenable. I think he would be especially appreciative of someone who is interested in or practiced in permaculture. Um, I think he might even be uh, savvy to trades and stuff. So, yeah, uh, I can't say for sure. I haven't talked to David about that, but just to, just to mention, um, on hopefully on David's behalf or any of you all out there who want to get their hand practiced at permaculture, David is very interested in developing this place and needs a lot of hands to make things happen. So down here, you can see we created another series of swales on the back side. You can see some ones up there. Um, and 